Uh, this is Mark Leggio, and you're listening to Vibe 105. Vibe Talks. Vibe Talks. More than just music. Hey everybody, this is John Carlo Alino reporting for Vibe 105 with a sports Vibe Talk segment where we're going to be talking about football today. I'm happy to be joined by my guest. You've seen him make his debut. Uh, it's his rookie season down there in Winnipeg. He is a kicker for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Mark Leggio. How are you doing, Mark? How's it going, man? Thanks for having me on. Uh, doing great. Uh, happy to have you on here. It's not too... Uh, Often you see somebody from Woodbridge go in and uh, get drafted to Winnipeg and you've been taking this league by storm. Just take us back last year because it was an interesting circumstance. You get drafted during a COVID pandemic. Uh, What was that moment like when you get drafted and how did you celebrate that? Yeah, I know it was definitely a different year. That's for sure. And uh, it was a, it was a surreal feeling that moment, you know, like it's a, it's a night you'll never forget. So, I was there with a couple of people in my family and we were watching the TV, watching like the names being called. And then uh, from rounds one to 20, you see like the guys on the screen and then the rest like just goes to like the computer. And then uh, we were, we had the computer hooked up to the TV and uh, you know, my phone was going off. Uh, I had my agent calling me and he was just seeing my name pop up on that screen. And um, that moment, like finally happening and being captured in my life, it was such a surreal moment. And, just like my family and everyone was so happy for me. It was a, it was definitely a night to remember. Unfortunately, the season ended up getting canceled that year, but so I kind of took things into my own hands and uh, took my training down to London where I went to school and uh, trained with a bunch of other CFL guys down there and got on some fields that I was allowed to go on to and just tried to stay at it as best as I could until like the upcoming season. Yeah. You mentioned they're taking your training elsewhere. And I think like a lot of you guys that got drafted, you didn't really get a chance to like get that feel for what it was like to be a pro. And now this year you're getting thrown into it where it would be the second year of your development. Uh, How challenging has that been just to adjust to becoming a professional and just getting a feel of what it's like to be an a pro athlete day to day? Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a big change. That's for sure. Because basically instead of like university or going there to your school and you're just going to play football, it's like you're waking up every day and going to your like everyday job. It's a, it's definitely a different feeling when you take it in and it still hasn't set in for me. Right. It still kind of feels like I'm, I'm just playing football, but like, it's uh it's, it's an amazing feeling getting to play a sport that you love for your everyday job. And I just love every, every opportunity I get to get out there and wake up every day, go to practice, just be in the facilities, the stadium. And then on game day, when you have like a whole city cheering for you, it's, it's such a, it's such an amazing feeling. And it's uh, something that uh, I wish like everyone got to experience. It's, it's a feeling that uh, I'll stay with me every time I get out there, you know, practice. I take my reps, just like, you know, you wake up, have your morning coffee and get ready for the day. I do the same thing, uh, get to the stadium, do my pre pre practice, pre game ritual, and then just head onto the field and uh, kick those balls to the uprights, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, this uh, season, you got the chance to uh, make your debut and not only did you make your debut, you made a statement in your debut. Uh, you kicked the, pretty important field goal at the end of it. Uh, you win the game. So take us through that whole experience. Like, were you nervous at all for that first game? Like what was going through your mind that whole day? Yeah. So, uh, I, I had done my same warm up. So I know at, uh, when I started, I was only punting. So I did, uh, my pregame warm up. I always involve field goals and I do punting and kickoffs as well. So I, I kept that, that same routine. And then, uh, the one week where they said, Hey, we're going to need you to do field goals this week. I was like, okay, you know, I've been, that's what I've been ready for. I've been doing this for my whole university career and I warm up the same way that I did from my university career and uh, going into that game, like, you know, obviously a little bit of nerve set in. Uh, obviously my first kick there, uh, I had an extra point and I, I just missed it a little bit to the right. And then I'm like, uh, you know, now I'm going to, I got a feel for it, got that one out of the way. And then I got called up for my first field goal. The game was a 50 yarder. And I, when I put that through the uprights, it was like, wow, like you just feel on top of the world. Like that's, that's awesome. Uh, My long snapper came up to me, handed me the the ball that I just kicked. And I have that memory now forever for the rest of my life. And then as the game went on, I ended up kicking a few more field goals and uh, eventually it ended up coming down to a game winning field goal. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is a pretty intense first game here. Like it's something that uh, us kickers have like dream of a first game going and, as soon as I kicked that ball off my foot, like I knew it felt good. And I saw it traveling through the uprights and it just like the crowd erupted. Like it, it was like 
something that you had to like put in the picture. It was, it was such a great feeling. And I just hope that I get a lot more, a lot more of those memories along the way. (laughs) Yeah. All the highlight packs showing it. So did anyone reach out to you that uh, kind of surprised you at all? Yeah. Yeah. I had a, I had a couple guys reach out to me, you know, it was mostly like friends and family. Um, but like guys that I haven't heard about, like talked to in a while, like they're watching, like watching you on TV. It's like, who would ever thought like, this is like a little guy from Woodbridge is just like on the TV and like, he got his whole friends and family just messaging him. Some guys that he hasn't really, that he used to play like soccer with uh, a long time ago, like in my younger years, messaging me, it's like, Hey man, like I just saw you kick that field goal, like way to go, man. Like I'm rooting for you. It just, uh, yeah, like the, the feeling was just so amazing. And like my phone was nonstop for probably a good three days. Um, so it's, it's just something that I, I couldn't explain. It's like a surreal feeling that like, I can't believe like that just happened. It's like that literally just happened. And it still hasn't it did, did, like, even to this day, it's kind of like, wow. Like that was a, an insane first game to be in. Yeah. It's like one for the history books too. It's one that I'm sure a lot of, uh, other fans are in Winnipeg. They're going to be talking about because it's like, it's so rare. Like you said before, for a kicker to come in like that, it's a kind of game you dream of. And then you achieve that in your rookie season. I think uh, that's great to see and congrats on that. I uh, just want to transition a little bit because uh, the Winnipeg fan base, you know, it's not like uh, Toronto, like, you know, about the Raptors, they have TFC, they have the Maple Leafs, Blue Jays, Winnipeg. Uh, they do have soccer, CPL. They have uh, the hockey team, the Jets, and then obviously the Blue Bombers. What have you noticed in your time in Winnipeg about the fan base and just everything about the sports culture over there? Man, uh, I know that uh, whenever the Jets play and the Blue Bombers are playing, like the, the everyone knows that it's game day. Like compared to Toronto, I know uh, the Argos are a little a little underneath the Raptors and the Blue Jays, you know, because Toronto's a big sports city, so everyone's got their favorite teams. But I think, like, for the CFL out here, and, like, especially with the Rough Riders in Saskatchewan and here in Winnipeg, it's huge. Like, the games are always packed, and you see, like, even driving around after practice, everyone's got, like, a Blue Bomber logo on their driver's license, right? Or, like, even a Winnipeg Jets one. So, like, it's it's a different experience being playing football out here and like the environment to playing, like when we played in Toronto, comparing to playing a home game in Winnipeg, it's uh, the noise level is just insane. Like you got to prepare for that. You got to make sure like you could, you got your hand signals down, you got everything because talking's kind of limited during the game. Cause you're not going to be able to hear much. Um, it's even cool too, because uh, I know like, obviously nowadays we got to walk around with a mask on, but if like some players would go to a restaurant or like go, go, grocery shopping and that kind of stuff like people would know who you are here and they would say like hey man great game on the weekend we watched the game it's like or even if you have nowadays like if people have winnipeg masks on they could they come up to you like hey did you go to the game on the weekend and like you would never hear that and like down in toronto like you, you didn't hear that as much so here it's like just a different different environment for the fan base and like i love them they're they're such great energy for the team and they bring like a different environment to every game like, have they actually come up after that first game or uh, are you still just working your way into that uh, whole environment? I'm still kind of working my whole way into that, in that environment. Uh, my first game was very good. And then uh, as the next games came, uh, went about, obviously it was like a little, a little tougher for me. Like I, I had a few ups and down kicks. So I'm like, they, they all believe in me that I could do it. And like, just like some of the, some of the love that you get from the fans and especially some of the guys on our team, like uh, Willie Jefferson and Adam Big Hill, like those guys, like the fans love, like, like when they come out of the tunnel, it's like, boom, like the, everyone's on their feet and they're just going nuts. And uh, well, hopefully I, I get to that point in my career. Like when I come out of the tunnel, like they just erupt like that. I know I'm like a newer face around the city and everything, but like, the, the way that the fans have your back, it's, it's such a different feeling for you. That's great to hear there uh, with Mark Legio here on five, one Oh five sports, five talk segment. And Mark, something interesting that about your position as a kicker, you had uh, some history there. You start off in soccer as a kid. So uh, what was that like growing up in soccer? And then how did this whole opportunity come up to football? Was that something you were always interested in or, or soccer, what your first sport was to maybe try to be a pro at? Yeah, I uh, I basically started off. Yeah, I started off in soccer, and then uh, eventually I picked up hockey along the way. And I really enjoyed hockey, and I played soccer for way longer than hockey. And uh, 
soccer, I, I kind of played till I, I, I was about grade, grade nine. And then, uh, I started, I kept hockey along the way, but then as soon as I got into grade nine, I picked up uh, rugby in high school because of football or the coaches down there saw my like gym classes playing the different sports. I'm like, yeah, come play rugby. I'm like, I had no idea what rugby was. So I'm like, you know what? Why not? I'm an athletic guy. I'll, I'll go and try it. So uh, after grade nine, I stopped playing soccer and then I continued with hockey and rugby through grade nine to grade 10. And then in grade 10, my, uh, my buddy's dad, Lenny Mora came up to me and he said, why don't you come play football? Because I was kicking the extra points in rugby. And he's like, come kick in football and play a different position. And we're like, play whatever position you want. And I'm kind of like, I can't play football. You know, I'm like, I'm not that big of a guy at that age. I'm like, I'm not that tall. And I see these old linemen and D linemen, they're all six, four, six, five. I'm like, yeah, I crushed out there. And then uh, they're like, nah, just come kick and play whatever position you want. So I kept with hockey, kept with rugby, and I kept with football. I played quarterback, DB, linebacker. I tried all the positions. And then uh, I actually got hurt playing linebacker. So then I said, you know what, I'm just going to stick with kicking. So I stuck with kicking until grade 12, stuck with hockey and rugby until grade 12. And then after grade 12, that's where Western came up to me during our, our offset game in the at Bill Crothers and he, they wanted me to come play for them. And that's how I knew that I was going to stick with football after high school. And then obviously going through Western, I, I had a great career there, had some accolades, broke some records. And then now I'm, I'm happy to be involved in the CFO with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Yeah. I think it's interesting too, because you start off in soccer. So I think like that training, that range of motion where you're taking the ball, like you carry that over into football. Do you think a lot of football players maybe in that kicking position, it would help if they came from a soccer background? Uh, I do think it makes a difference. Obviously now going from soccer to rugby or soccer to football, you get that same motion of swinging your leg in that ball. But now hitting a football is a lot different than hitting a soccer ball. So now every time I try and kick a soccer ball, I always put it over the net because I'm thinking I got to kick it over the uprights. <laughs> so it's like, it's a different kind of lean into the ball, but I think it does play a fact and uh, it definitely can um, correlate well into football and soccer. They both go hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, once again, for those just joining us here on Vibe 105, this is a Sports 5 Talk segment. We're being joined by Winnipeg Blue Bombers kicker, Mark Legio, And Mark, like, you mentioned there, like Western came to you at uh, one of your offset tournaments and they uh, pretty much said, you know, uh, join our team. Like what drew you towards their program and what made uh, their school uh, appeal to you the most? Yeah. Uh, so when they came up to me, I met the, the recruiting coordinator, Chris Marcus, and he was a very, he was an amazing coach and amazing friend of mine to this day. He was like such a great guy. Like he was, he showed us around campus when I got up there and he took me and my mom around campus, showed us everything, took us to, um, took us to a restaurant to go eat and just show us what the team was about. And I just knew that the football history behind Western was amazing. Like I saw there, when you walk into their stadium, stadium, they have a huge CFL board of all the players that were drafted or went to the NFL and their board takes up like a, an entire wall. So I knew like, the guys that come here, like they're, they're ready to go to the next level. And just knowing that their football history, they had the program that I wanted to take there. And that just like, I knew it was a good set for me. And like with their kicking situation, actually my ex coaches, Daryl Wheeler and Liram Hawalaru both went there and they just moved on. So their kicking spot was kind of fresh. So I went there with another guy there and it was sort of between me and him to battle for the position. And I thought it was a pretty good spot to be in since I knew a lot of other guys had like uh, mid mid year guys that were kind of like just got there, but they have a year under their belt. So I think this was just the best opportunity for me was at Western, and I took advantage of that and I got my starting role in my second year, and I just continued from there. Yeah, I think it's interesting too, like the recruiting process in a lot of sports. Like you're in the United States, especially uh, not every state mm -hmm. they have the best intention of the athletes at heart. So. When you're coming down to that decision, what was it about that meeting? Was it that they took you out and like showed you around or was there something else that really spoke to you about the coaches there and recruiting you to the team? Yeah. Like I, I enjoyed all of my recruiting trips. Like I went, uh, I went on a recruiting trip at Guelph. I went to a recruiting trip at Windsor. I went to a couple of different schools. I went to Waterloo. So I, 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 I pretty much, I've, I could have went anywhere in Ontario to university for football and it was just, it's just like the Western was one of the top schools for football. And I knew like football was something I wanted to do post university. So I knew if I went there, I was making the right choice to be on that, like 
powerhouse of a football team and get like the the coaching and everything. The the other bonus that they had there was uh, they had a kicking coach, which was Daryl Wheeler, and a lot of other teams didn't really have just like a specific kicking coach. So I thought that was another big opportunity for me to go there and pursue like that whole kicking experience. It was just the right fit for me and everything just like panned out perfectly and was pointing me towards Western. I had, I actually had a few other guys that went to my high school that went there, like David Mackey. He was there and I like got some insider information about like classes and the football team and like how the environment is there. And he helped me in my decision. And it just like everything, everything just pointed towards Western. And, uh, you know, like Vibe 105 here, we're located on uh, the York University campus here in Toronto. And around this time of year, uh, athletes who are kind of like in your situation as a pro, they're at that situation now in the OUA where they missed out on a year. They're just getting back into it. Uh, What was your experience like as a student athlete, just that whole grind of it and balancing your classes with the athletic performances? Um, I, I got to say, I, I, I really liked it because I, I want to say if I was just a student at, at Western, you get you have a lot of time to do stuff. But since you had to balance athletics and school, you had to really plan out your schedule and that like really, really improved my time management skills. So as soon as practice was done, so you had to schedule your classes before 3 p.m. every day during the week, because then from 3 p.m. to about probably like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, you're at football. So whenever you had that period of time to work on stuff, that's when you had to work on it. So it was usually game day was on Saturday, walkthrough was on Friday and rundown was on Sunday. So I'd say Friday and Sunday were your key days to get some homework done. And that was basically the days that I took to get that stuff done. And during the week, whenever you had like that little bit of time, that was like, you had that crunch time to do your school and get that done. And Western was a very big school on like, school comes first football comes second and they had like they had the help for you to get the help that you needed in courses maybe you were struggling or you needed that little extra kick of help and it it was everything was just amazing like the help that they provided you school wise and football wise it was just like a great family atmosphere they just wanted everyone to succeed and it was just like a great balance of school and football at that school it's interesting too that you brought that up, like uh, just balancing it all out. Uh, recently, uh, we spoke to uh, Phil Davis, who is a former UFC fighter. Uh, he was a Division One athlete, and he was talking about how a schedule at Penn State when he was wrestling kind of eased the tension or going into it because he has a schedule. He knows these group of people he's going to be around the most. So, uh, did you feel something similar when you went to Western? Did that kind of ease like uh, any? nerves that you might have had starting university and starting off like in London? Yeah, it was. uh, So obviously going away from home for school is a big step in general. So just knowing that you were going away to university and the team basically was your second family and they would have your back with whatever you needed. And even like the veterans on the team, if you needed help with stuff, like they would help you out with stuff as much as they could, because basically everyone was either, there was always a majority of each like player group or position group that was in the same uh, degree as you. So like they would took classes that you're in prior to what they're in now. And like, everyone just had that help available to them. And it was just like, it felt like such an easy transition, obviously getting used to res living on your own, doing your own laundry, making your own meals. It's a different change for a lot of people, but it taught me a lot of life lessons and I'll never forget that it it helped me grow as a person. And it, it taught me, like everything I know today, like, you know, I, w- I was never a very good cook, but, you know, now I'm pretty good at cooking and I like cooking uh, laundry. I've done for a long time. So that was an easy one for me to pick up and um, getting like the, it, a big thing was that time management. That was a huge one for me. And I learned how to deal with that very well after university. That's great. Uh, once again, for those just joining us here on five, five, we're being joined by Winnipeg blue bombers kicker, Mark Leggio. Uh, and Mark, just a final couple questions here. Uh, you know, as a footballer like yourself in a position where it's uh, kind of tense at times, you're going in, got an important field goal, important punt. Do you have any superstitions at all uh, when you start your day uh, or getting prepared for the game? Uh, superstitions, um, like not really. It's, uh, it, it, it's kind of different for the CFL now because the games fall on different days and they're at different times. So it's like, you gotta, if you have that pregame ritual or pregame stuff or like day before stuff you like doing, you got to get it done. Like maybe a day earlier, if there's travel involved or like, 
Um, you got to get like those meals in, uh, you got to shove them all in earlier if you have an earlier afternoon game. So for me, it's like pretty superstition is not really like, I just hope that I get like a pretty good pregame meal in the night before. So it's like, for me, it's like, I, I love having like a big plate of pasta and a meat, like something like that. So I like carb load. And then the next day I have like a good breakfast. If I can get like a solid lunch in, uh, and just be as energized and hydrated as possible. But like, uh, not really any like pre superstitions and stuff like with me, you know, just obviously you have your pregame warm up that everyone does. And I have my own little like kicking things that I like getting through, but nothing, nothing superstitious in that, in that aspect. Yeah. And, uh, I guess also another one, like you're a rookie into the league now in the CFL, uh, which veterans have really taken you under their wing and like showed you the ropes there in the CFL and try to make you, uh, the best pro you can be. Um, I gotta say all of the, all of my teammates, um, and all of the, even like the rookies that are on the team, like, we just like the family environment we have in our team is just amazing. Like all of the guys on your team, like that's the, mo- the model we go by is like, I got your back. Like if you have, a, if you're having a bad day, you have a bad game, you have a bad practice. Like everyone's just there to pick you up. Like even the coaches, like it's just such a great family environment on the blue bombers. And I just like, I don't think I would want to be on any other team. Like as soon as I got here as a rookie, everyone introduced yourself. Like no one's shy to you they make sure everyone gets to know each other and figure out what's going on in each other's lives. And it's just, uh, it's just such a great family environment. And, you know, just knowing that the whole team is there for you and if you need anything and like, they'll do whatever they need to take care of you or help you out. It's just, it's such a great feeling. You have like basically a hundred brothers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and before we wrap up here, Mark, uh, how can our listeners and viewers follow you on social media? Um, so it's just my, my Twitter handle and my Instagram are just Mark Leggio. It's my name. So it's pretty easy. I don't try and make it anything fancy and complicated. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Highly recommend that follow. Uh, Mark, I'd like to thank you for sharing your time and coming on vibe One Hundred Five to talk all about your rookie season, all about the grind of being a student athlete. And I wish you all the best. Hey, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you having me on today. And now back to your vibe, Vibe 105.